when I was in school and sort of switched my mind and went actually to cantorial school. But following my grandfather and father, um, I was always compared into how I dressed, how I looked, how I spoke. And after a while I thought, you know, this is too much pressure for me to compare to, to my dad. Um, so I switched over to Juilliard. It felt the right thing to do to, to find my own path in life and where I wanted to go and how I wanted to express myself. I did not want to be always, well, you're the son of Sidney Shikoff and uh, he was like this and you're like, I didn't want to follow that. When I uh, was lucky enough to get into the opera and get on, let's say, the stage of the Metropolitan Opera, at a very early age, I must say, um, I took my dad, I took his ring, uh, he had passed away, I took his ring from the marriage and put it on my finger and kind of spoke to my father um, uh, in my soul and in my, uh, in my head and uh, asked him to join me on stage at the Met and to share in the nerves and in the success, hopeful success. I took the course of focusing my nerves on stage to be able to put it into the characterization and also to put into the projection of the sound of, of my message and my life force, to, to, to carry it to a public. And I think that the focus, utilizing it and to focus it, uh, not just vocally, because that's obvious, we all want to get a focused voice, but this uh, a mental and uh, um, uh, emotional focus to, uh, uh, to reach from my heart to the heart of the listener. And, and this connection, this kind of electric connection, this, this impulse between us, uh, it's, a, it's a way to be able to utilize and work off a nervous energy. So I'm very involved with um, young singers. What I've learned, I was talking to Jonathan Friend, the Metropolitan Opera. He asked me, do you really like to teach? And I said, the biggest surprise, uh, because I never thought about it, is how much I love other singers. Because as a, as a performer and as a singer, um, I've been so focused on my own work. I loved sopranos to put them up on a pedestal and always allow them to do whatever they wanted. Sometimes it worked, sometimes they were a little bit selfish, but I loved working with them as well as the other voices, but very close to, the, to a relationship of, of a man and a woman on stage in, in the character. But I was so focused on me that I didn't realize how much I love and respect young voices. One of the greatest tenors, uh, Vladimir Atlantov, I love him to death. And, uh, but you had, uh, of course, many others. But uh, Vladimir was, for me, a golden, golden age uh, tenor and a very, very nice man. He was wonderful to me when I was, I guess I was 10, I am 10 years younger than him. So he came to one of my dress rehearsals in Munich when he was singing there and I was doing Adriana Le Couvre. And he came to my dress rehearsal and he said to me, you know, you have a golden voice and from such a star for me and such a monumental talent. What that meant for me as a younger singer to hear from Adlantov, you know, about my voice. I never forgot it. You never forget when an artist on that stature is generous to you. And he was very, very generous to me. Uh, to, to say what he said, it filled me with the possibilities that I could go further.